These are the cries that have echoed through Jakarta streets for the past week. Abuse and threats heaped on the head of the Communist Party. This group is being spurred on by an army officer. For although the army is non-political, it's using the non-communist student and other mass organizations to back up its demands that the party be banned. At the president's palace last Saturday, cabinet ministers, high-ranking officers of the armed forces and the president himself found themselves face to face publicly for the first time since the attempted coup. The occasion was the swearing in of General Suharto as Minister Chief of Staff of the Army to replace the murdered General Yani. Three key figures were Foreign Minister Subandrio, suspected by the Army of being implicated in the coup and looking distinctly uncomfortable, Suharto himself, who crushed the coup, relatively unknown, now the new Indonesian strongman and anti-communist disciple of General Nasution, and President Sukarno, who used the occasion brilliantly as an orator to accuse the neo-colonialist and imperialist countries of making far too much of the incident to split the Indonesian people. Here was the president, apparently very much master of the situation. Yet the state of his country proved this not to be entirely the case. We found this out for ourselves by driving up into the West Java hill country to Bandung. Roadblocks were commonplace, as the military continued to search for fleeing armed communist youth front members.